Okay, the next step is to set up the original piece in the milling machine, which I have done. So it's now sitting on two parallels and uh, clamped on pretty tight with two clamps. And I have uh, indicated it to the y-axis and it's now not moving at all. And If some of you doesn't know, uh, this is a millimeter indicator and it's showing one hundredth of a millimeter increments. And one hundredth of a millimeter is four ten thousandths of an inch. So each of these lines is less than half of the line in a standard a thousandths inch indicator. So it's pretty well um, straight within the y-axis now. And the next thing is to center the spindle of the machine to this hole right here. Okay. The indication is done. And it's now within half a hundredth of a millimeter, which is like two tenths of an inch. So now it's time to feed it in the control. So it knows where the part is. Well, it wants me to close the doors. Every now and then it wants me to close the door so that I know that I haven't bypassed the safety switch on the doors. Which I think is okay. Um, actually, I have run into a few jobs that I uh, could have done easier on this machine rather than on manual machines. Uh, but I could not do them because I would have to have pieces hanging out the door and I still just don't want to bypass the, um, the door switch. I just want to keep it as it is. So we go to fixtures and we go to utilities. We select fixture offset number two, zero, and then we store the location, the current location. We store the X and Y axis and we exit and now it's time to find the the height which is just the height from the table to the top of the workpiece I think I might use a depth micrometer to check that out so this is where we start and this is what we should have after milling so, first we're using the 6mm long carbide end mill to rough everything out and then we are finishing using the same end mill. Then we're drilling 3.2mm holes and tapping M4 threads. Let me simulate this to you. So this is the stock. A little bit speed. And it's now showing also the tail of the toolpath. Finishing. Drilling and tapping. And that's it. Okay, we should be all set to go. I have all the tools set. Uh, so all the four tools that are needed for this operation. So it's the main tool is gonna be this six millimeter long solid carbide uh, aluminum end mill, and then a drill. This one here. It's a 3.3 or 3.2 millimeter drill and an M4 tap. Okay. And this is pretty interesting because this is like a 1000 plus plus dollar part. So if I ruin it, 
it's not gonna be very good. But it's not very good in the uh, in the state that it is in now. So if it's broken, it's worth nothing. So I think it's time to hit the green button and see what we get. Again, rapids and feeds as slow as they go. And here we go. Okay, so far looks good and we have the correct correct uh, coordinate system set up. So it's time to switch on the coolant. And bring up the feed. Okay, now we're ready. And time for drilling and tapping. Okay, now the tapping and the tap is set up on the other drill chuck. Okay, finished. Whew. Let's open the doors and see what we get. I think it looks okay. I think it looks just fine. Uh, but I certainly didn't watch the simulation as closely as I should have uh, because I think the roughing pass um, left uh, too much material on the bottom. It was only supposed to, tear, to lay to leave five hundredths of a millimeter or two thousandths of an inch, but I think it actually left something like a full millimeter, and uh, it was not very easy for the long thin end mill to, to mill that out but luckily it came out okay and the wall finish and also the floor finish look pretty beautiful come on No complainments here. Also something that I didn't expect. Uh, I knew there were two holes in here and one of them popped through here. But uh, they're just holding on to something. I know these parts actually have internal uh, coolant channels or fluid channels, whatever fluid it is for. Uh, but uh, this is not one of the channels, it's just a fastener hole. So, 
the ultimate question, will my insert fit? It might fit, but I must say I doubt it will fit. Because there's now supposed to be only one hundredth of a millimeter of, of play. And I think that's not enough. So most probably I will have to uh, redo the finishing with some more clearance. But it might still fit if I'm very lucky. Let's see. No, it's, it's not feeling like it's going. Also, I haven't done any deburring yet, so maybe that's also something that I should do first. And also let me take some measurements. Okay, let's get back to you. Okay, it will go in uh, backwards. One edge, one, yeah, one edge at a time. So it goes in this way and also it's, it's really tight and also it goes in this way but then the other side is not going in even though it's extremely close but it's not going in so I know if I gave it a little bit of heat it would just slide in but um, I don't think I, I want to do that, especially now, because I'm planning to finish it with the same setup. So when I have the piece, uh, the, I mean the insert in, the, in this piece, uh, I want to keep this very same setup, just screw and glue it on here, and then finish mill the bore, and also finish the slot here. So I don't want to pull it out, because I want this to be as accurate as ever possible. So I rewrote the finishing program and I'm now gonna run it and it's gonna finish uh, slower by feed and also take half a hundredth of a millimeter more per side. So should be, I think it will go after the finishing. So I'm not gonna show that to you because it's the same as before. Okay.